Let's talk about places you can print your book and I wanna rank them, the ones that I've used from best to worst. Now I have published 18 different books in my last almost eight years of publishing and I have tried at this point four different companies specific to print books. <laughs> so disclaimer number one, we're not talking about eBooks today. We're just talking about paperbacks and hardcovers. Three out of the four companies I wanna to share today are probably like the top three that you typically see indie authors using. And when I say indie author, I mean self-published authors like us. So that would be Barnes & Noble Press, self-explanatory. Ingram Spark, which is a very large print on demand company used by traditional publishing as well to print their books. And then KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing, which is actually Amazon's publishing print on demand company. And I want to include 48 hour books and give them an honorable mention, even though they're not technically a print on demand company, they're actually more of a special edition print company where you can do things like foiling on your covers like this. And they recently added edge printing as well. So there's tons of cool features there. We will talk about them, I promise. But disclaimer number two, there are actually a lot of other print on demand companies out there. If you're like already starting to type, like what about Lulu? What about draft to digital And they just recently added print books. What about uh, Book Vault? <laughs> what about all these other places? I agree, there's probably a ton of other great places out there, but I think it'd be kind of silly for me to talk about companies that I haven't actually worked with. So that's why I'm limiting it to these four. And like I said, three of them are kind of the big three <laughs> that you typically see indie authors using. But I absolutely recommend doing your research and checking out other companies as well, because they might also have things that fit your needs better. <sighs> okay, and then disclaimer number three. I know I said I'm gonna rank them best to worst because that does sound awesome for a title, but if I actually did that, that would be my personal opinion. And you might, again, have different needs than me. So what I decided to do instead was I created how many, let's see, eight categories so far that I'm kind of going to go through each company and these eight categories and share where they rank in each category. And then we'll see just how they add up, I guess. And that way you can kind of know a more comprehensive picture of, are they really worth it? Do they fit what I need? that kind of stuff. All right, our categories are number one, accessibility, or we could call this ease of use. In other words, how easy is this for a beginner to figure out? Because that is a big deal. Like if you are just getting started, you do not want to start with the most complicated print on demand company. <laughs> number two is cost. So I was putting like cost to print and then their cut and then author royalties. So kind of like the split, but I almost want to separate that. I'm going to separate that. I think cost to print should be one thing. And then author royalties should be another because they are pretty different author royalties just mean how much do you make in the end how much goes in your pocket <laughs> versus cost to print since they're physical books obviously when a reader is buying a book they're going to take a certain portion of that and put it towards the printing costs the actual like paper and the shipping and all that jazz <laughs> <laughs> Number four, customer service. This for me is a really big consideration, but for you, it might not be as big a deal. Number five, printing and shipping time. Like when they mail books to you and to readers as well, but specifically to you, because even if you're not gonna sell books directly on your website or whatever, you're probably at some point going to wanna order a proof copy, AKA a test copy to yourself to check if the book looks good before you press publish. And there are certain companies we'll talk about that can take over a month month to get you a proof copy, which let's just be honest in indie publishing where everything's moving at lightning speed, that is not ideal. <laughs> Number six, I have any like extra hidden costs, like uploading fees, things like that. Number seven, can you do print pre-orders? Because being able to collect some sales before release can make a big impact on your release. Number eight, uh, I'm going to call it the reporting, like sales reporting. And this includes both like the pre-order reports and just regular sales reports. And is it readable? Do you know what's happening? Do they even tell you what's happening? <laughs> Spoiler, some companies don't. And then I just have an other category to kind of umbrella catch anything else that is kind of unique to one of these companies that I might want to bring up for you to know. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> that's the categories. And then I have my little ranking over here <laughs> to be like, how do I really feel about this? Is it great? Is it not so great? <laughs> Okay, let's jump into it. Starting with KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing, which I would say possibly is the most well-known out of all of these, I think. And like I mentioned, it's owned by Amazon, so it's their print-on-demand company, meaning they're only selling through 
Amazon, just keep that in mind. And before I even go into this, I just wanna know also, be very careful to make sure you're not working with a scam company because apparently there are some copycats out there trying to pretend that they are KDP and people have gotten scammed by this. So just be aware, make sure you actually have Kindle Direct Publishing, Amazon's company, if you're gonna work with them. Let's start with accessibility, that ease of use. Can a beginner figure this out pretty quickly? I'm gonna say, absolutely. This company is my top vote for beginners. The other three companies in this video just do not compare because everything is very straightforward, obvious, clear. If you have any questions, they will almost guaranteed have a little like question box that you can click on to read more or an entire help page about it. If you're willing to do your research, you can figure this company out pretty quickly. I even have a video about how you can publish on this company in about 15 minutes. It's that easy to upload your book. I will link that video below if you're curious and want to know more. Print costs are next and I love that when you are uploading a book to KDP, you can see very clearly they tell you exactly how much this book will cost to print. Let's get an actual example here. All right, this is The Secret Gift. This is book one in my series, The Queen's Rise, which is a villain origin series. So on this third section right here is paperback rights and pricing. And if you scroll down, they actually have a ton of information. This was what I was telling you about where you can click on all these highlighted blue areas to kind of check it out. Like, what does this mean? So right here are the printing costs that we were talking about. And as you can see for this particular book, it's $4.14 to print. If you have a hardcover, it's gonna be quite a bit more. Just keep that in mind. Or if you have a thicker book, then it's also gonna be more. There's the rate right here, which is 60%, the royalty rate that you'll earn for each sale based on the book's list price. So it really depends on what you are pricing the book. And then right here, they're gonna say, here's an estimate of how much you're gonna earn per sale. So this is how much I actually get for this particular paperback when I price it at $13.99. If I was to change that price, then it would go up or down. But that is the print costs and the royalty split. And so funny enough, I've had people like kind of troll my comments in the past, not often, but one or two people. And they gripe about, oh, Amazon takes so much money from us authors, like we should get all of it. And to a point, like, yeah, it would be great to get more money, but I really do understand that it costs money to print books. Like books are expensive. And then number two, they actually do a lot of work. I have actually sold books on my website and it's a lot of work to mail and ship out books and be on it and be the shipping person. And so I appreciate the work that they do and I think they deserve that cut, honestly. And I say that knowing that they actually give authors the best deal that I've seen so far. That number that you just saw for the author royalty side of things, I'm kind of, I'm kind of merging these two categories a little bit, but the author royalty that you see there is very competitive and the other companies that we're going to talk about today give authors less. So whenever people gripe about Amazon, I want to be like, I get it, but also show me where you can find something better elsewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm going to actually rate them... I'm gonna say for print costs, I'm pretty impressed. Like I think they get a good deal. I'm gonna give them a five. And then for author royalties, it could be better. It could be a little better. Cause you know, we'd put a lot of work into our books. So I'm gonna say I am fairly impressed. <laughs> I'm not gonna give them a perfect rating because I, I do agree with people. We work hard for our books. It would be really nice if we got a bit of a higher cut, but honestly, I get it. I'm almost gonna give them like a 4.5. Customer service is the next category. And I've had a few weird customer service moments. Of course, people are people. They're gonna have bad days or they're going to be new. They're not going to know everything sometimes. So there's been a couple moments where I have actually had to call back and be like, so let me try this again. Let's see if I can get a different person. <laughs> but I would say for the most part, I have had very good experiences across the board. At least 50% of the people have been just on it. Super helpful. They know exactly what they're doing. They give me the information right away. And then the other thing that I want to specifically include in this category, just mentioning like returns specifically for misprints, because unfortunately any print on demand company can have misprints. And this is just, it happens. It shouldn't happen a lot, but it does happen. I, I think Amazon handles it really well. I think you just take a quick picture, you send them the information for that specific book, they give you a refund. They're pretty quick on that as well. The only downside and the reason I am going to dock them a point is because they probably have the most misprints of all these companies. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, I mean like I've had books that are just missing simple things like title pages, but I've also had books at least once printed where I was missing the first couple chapters. <laughs> 
or the spine is just a little off. One time, just once ever, I think the book was upside down, like the cover was on, but the print was the other direction. <laughs> it's funny because again, the customer service is good. So you get the refund and it's okay. It's not as funny when a reader gets it and then they think it's our fault as the author, but my hope is that it doesn't happen very often. I'm gonna give them a four. I am fairly impressed. Their customer service is pretty good. Printing and shipping time is next. I kind of have to separate this one though because there's paperback shipping and then there's hardcover shipping because they have both in this company. Paperbacks are printed and shipped faster than any other company that we're gonna talk about, except maybe 48 hour books, which, you know, it's kind of in the name. Obviously we know how quick Amazon is. I love that for them. I'm gonna say if it was just paperbacks, I would give them a five, but hardcovers are another thing and they're still kind of new to hardcovers. So their printing is more like mm, 10 to 15 days plus shipping. So it does take a while to get a hardcover book. That one would be more of a three. So let's kind of meet in the middle because paperbacks you can typically get within a week or less. So I'm gonna say we're gonna meet in the middle and give them a four for this category. And then any extra hidden costs. They are completely free. They get a five for me. <sighs> but pre-order options, this is where Amazon's ranking is going to drop drastically because they just don't have any print pre-order options. They have ebook pre-orders. So that's where readers can get confused and they ask me like, why do you have ebook pre-orders up but you're not doing print? And if you want print pre-orders on Amazon, you can do that. This is where readers get really confused because there is another company we'll talk about that does print pre-orders on Amazon, but it's not through Amazon's print company, KDP. That's the difference. <laughs> and I know it sounds complicated. When you're directly publishing through KDP, you can't put any print books on pre-order. Gotta give them a one for this right now if you want to you can do print books don't get me wrong because we've obviously been talking about it but you have to basically bypass the pre-order and go straight to print so on on release day or typically i do one to three days beforehand you manually press print to get your book out to readers okay next category is sales reporting and I love KDP's reporting tabs. They have very clear ways to understand and multiple ways to understand your sales. You can look at your pre-orders alone. You can look at a specific book alone or a bunch. Like you can actually pick and choose which books you wanna look at, like a series, you name it. And you can get daily breakdowns. You can get the whole month breakdown. You can go back into the past, literally lifetime and see everything. You don't have to like wait for anything to get sent to you. Their reporting is what I wish every other company had just being real. And the other category. So this category is tricky because it's like, I want to include pros and cons. The first con I guess would be, I'm still not totally clear on what the extra distribution is. Expanded distribution means large distributors may add your book to their catalog. It's not totally clear. Online retailers outside of Amazon, like libraries, universities, and booksellers will then have the choice to purchase your book from those distributors. So what I will note there is that sounds great, but I've actually talked to some some friends who work for the library and they've said that they're not allowed to purchase from Amazon. But then booksellers also typically will go through other companies, specifically Ingram Spark, if they have that option. And I don't know how they always, like Barnes & Noble, for example, has also told me they will not buy from Amazon. It's a competitor, they're not gonna do it. Maybe smaller bookstores will, but this expanded distribution is like, it's an option. But as far as I'm aware, a lot of places will not use it. So that's a bit of a con, I will say. And then the hardcovers do not include dust jackets. So I have a couple of my hardcovers right here. This one you've seen it has a dust jacket, right? This is printed through a different company. And then this is my hardcover printed through KDP and it does not have a dust jacket. It's just this case laminate right here. I don't know if this is a big deal. Like I said, this is why I'm kind of ranking them and explaining things because it's really gonna depend. You might be like, oh, I don't care, no big deal. Or you might be like, no, I need a dust jacket. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like it really depends. But I will say that besides not having a dust jacket, this hardcover from Amazon's KDP is gorgeous. I have no issues with it. I sell this only on Amazon and I published specifically through them and I kind of did like this whole video series where I just tested it out and I thought it was a great experience. So it's gonna really depend on your preferences, but I will say, I think there's one other con-ish con in this category, which is their hardcovers being that they're still fairly new, do have some page limits. Must be between 75 and 550 pages. So I remember this being a collector's edition of four books in a series. I was like, oh my gosh, how do I get this?
this down under the 550 page count and it was really hard to format it. I had to bring chapter headers up and little things like that that I did not want to do but I could not get this on KDP without finding a way to save some pages. So that's not a huge con either. I think I've never had a reader complain about this and I love this book but that's something to consider because other companies that do hardcovers I don't think have a page limit that I'm aware of. <sighs> okay so what am I going to rate them for this? This category is tricky because it's like kind of pros and cons but I'm going to say they're average. <sighs> All right Ingram Spark. I have got to speed this up. Is it good for beginners or not? I have an older tutorial I'll link it below where I uploaded to Ingram Spark and you can see how it's a bit more complicated than KDP but I'm going to give them credit because they have updated their platform and I do think it's more user-friendly. I think when I go to it there are still like one or two places that always kind of trip me up and I have to like remember what this means. You might have some places where you have to do a little research. They do have those little highlighted boxes to explain stuff but sometimes it's a little unclear. I would have given them a bad rating in the past but now I'm gonna say they're just kind of average. I still wouldn't recommend it to a beginner honestly because there are some places that could trip you up but after you do like KDP and you figure that out then you might be okay over here. <laughs> Next is print costs and I have an issue with the pricing breakdown on Ingram Spark but I don't think think it comes out of the print costs at least not much like it's definitely more expensive to print books with Ingram they they say that it costs more for all print books and I can say that with confidence because I've actually always published my books directly on Amazon and then I've added Ingram Spark for all the other distribution because they will we'll talk about how they do like Walmart and Target and um, books depository books a million etc but it's not a massive difference so I'm gonna say they're kind of average again with their print costs. Like I don't think they're bad, but they're not great either. Well, the hardcovers are kind of expensive to print. Queen's Rise hardcover through Ingram is like $15 or something insane to print. It is a big book, but that's still like, you see hardcovers in stores for $15 sometimes, and that's not possible for me to do as an indie author. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna say three for print costs. And then when it comes to author royalties, so that's like the split between what they take in Ingram Spark and authors get for their percentage in their pocket. This is where I have a big issue with them. They require authors to do what's called a wholesale discount and they've also upped it. So I think it's required to do 40%. Here, I'll show you my screen again. This is Ingram Spark, specifically The Queen's Rise, which is this book I was just showing you. You scroll down into the print pricing, you can see that in the United States, I have this book priced at $30 and the required discount is 40%. I always make it the lowest I can because I don't want to discount my book and the compensation is $3.17 for a $30 book. Let that sink in a little bit. It looks like uh, with outside of the United States you can do a slightly lower discount but not by much. And just so you know what I'm talking about, this is specifically meant for booksellers and I think librarians as well. And the idea is if a bookstore like say Barnes & Noble wants to buy your book and you give them a 40% discount, then they can sell it at the regular price, but they still get a cut because of that 40% discount. And that's great. Like no problem. I want that. I want bookstores to sell my book. And if that's what it takes for them to want to carry it, then great. However, most indie authors who use Ingram Spark probably get the majority of their sales individually from readers who are buying off like online websites, such as again, Target's website, Walmart's website, Barnes and Noble's website, Amazon's website, because Ingram Spark does distribute to Amazon. So when a reader is buying a book at full price on Amazon or Barnes and Noble, but you as the author had to give, you were required to give a 40% discount no matter what across the board, where does that extra money go? Whose pocket is it going into? You know what I'm saying? So I have a serious issue with this wholesale discount being required no matter what for all book sales no matter what because as you can see a $30 book makes $3. That is not okay. I'm like I hope it's very clear where I'm going with this. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> not okay. And of course, they're not going to say anything, but they are absolutely getting that cut. If the reader is paying full price, but you're giving a discount, they are getting the extra money. And that's not cool. <sighs> that is one of the cases where if you wanted to complain about a company, I would absolutely join you. And their customer service. If you thought I was complaining about it in the past, <laughs> and 
just gotten more frustrating now because they removed their phone number. So you can't even call somebody and get like real time. And when I say real time, I mean it used to take like 30 minutes to reach a person, but at least you could reach a person the same day that you had a problem. Just to give you a real life example. The Queen's Rise, this guy right here, went live or released on October 1st and it's published through Ingram Spark because again, Amazon doesn't actually have dust jacket options for their hardcovers. So even though it's on Amazon, it's actually being sold via Ingram Spark, okay? The very day that it goes live on Amazon, Amazon says temporarily out of stock on release day. As a print on demand company, I don't understand how a book could ever be out of stock unless they don't have paper. Like I remember during 2020, there were some paper issues, of course, but something was fishy there. And <laughs> my options were so limited because yes, I did call KDP. They have a help desk. And I said, Hey, do you know what's going on? Just curious. And they're like, no, I'm sorry. This is coming from Ingram Spark. Like we don't, we're not publishing it. So we can't do anything. And Ingram Spark, what am I going to do? Do I email them and then a week later maybe get a response? Sometimes they don't even respond to my emails. What I ended up doing was I blasted them on social media, not really thinking anything would happen. And that's how I got a response. But the message back was along the lines of that's not our fault. That's an Amazon issue, which is not helpful either. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I have other examples as well. If you go back and watch any of my videos, you can search my name plus Ingram Spark to watch. And I have other stories of real examples with real proof. <laughs> But uh, even my very first experience with them, I ordered over $1,000 in books. And then they said, oh, I'm sorry, there's going to be a delay of over a month. So I was like, that's not working for me. I'm going to cancel that order. And I ordered through Amazon instead. Meanwhile, I tried to get my money back from Ingram Spark back when they had a phone number. And I'm talking to somebody and they said, we can't find your invoice. And they were trying to keep over $1,000. I had to threaten to have my credit card company come after them before they found the invoice. So we've just started out on the wrong foot with customer service and it's never gotten better. <laughs> Did I give them a number yet? I think this one's really clear. I think it's obvious. <laughs> oh, I should mention in this category as well, since I brought it up for KDP, uh, returns and misprints. So of course, like I said, all companies have them. The good news is Ingram Spark seems to have misprints happen less often, but when you get them, it's a lot harder and there's more hoops to jump through before you can get your money back. So I'm, I'm not going to change my ranking for them. All right. Printing and shipping time. They are very, 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 very slow. <laughs> and if I rant about everything Ingram Spark, this video is going to be like an hour long, but typically just so you kind of have a comparison to KDP, I said KDP's paperbacks are about a week and their hardcovers mm, two to three weeks, maybe four one time versus Ingram Spark. My experience has been most books take about a month to arrive. Paperbacks might be slightly faster and hardcover slightly longer than that, depending on holidays and weekends and things like that. And again, we're in indie publishing here. We're coming at this from an indie perspective of things typically need to be fast. It's not convenient. I'm going to give them a two. And then any extra costs like those hidden uploading fees. Fortunately, I can at least say something nice about Ingram Spark that they got rid of that initial uploading fee. I think it was almost 50 bucks to upload any book. Now they got rid of that initial one, but I believe it's the first 90 days, I think, that there's no fees and you can make changes up to that 90 day mark. And that's where there's still some hidden costs that you should know about. And that's after 90 days, they do charge you to make any changes, whether it's for errors or just nice changes, like you wanna add that there's more books in the series or you wanna add a newsletter sign up or whatever the case may be. You might say, no problem, I will totally have the book done and I will never touch it again, except that's actually not always how it works. If you are more experienced, especially, you might find that you want to set up your book for pre-order up to a year or more out because you know how you work. You know that by the six month mark or the three month mark, the book will be done and you'll be ready to go. However, you want to set up a pre-order a year out, that 90 day window is going to pass before your book is done. This is really, really common, not just in indie publishing, but also in TradPub. And you're going to have to pay, what is it? I think it is $25 for cover, 25 for interior. And if your interior is changing your cover, has to change too. So it's 50 bucks every time you want to make changes. On top of that, let's say another scenario where it could be even more expensive would be if you want to update a series. So for example, the Stolen Kingdom series has four books in it and I changed the covers. Um, I ended up just re-uploading brand new books so that I could work around this. But 
that was very frustrating because that would have been extremely expensive. $50 per book, that adds up fast. What if you had an even bigger series? What if you just wanted to change one tiny little detail, like you printed the last book and you wanted to put a reading order or something like that in the front of the book. Since they got rid of the initial uploading fee, I will bring them up to an average. This is being generous though, honestly. I still don't think there should be fees. Like I kind of get it why they did it because I think people do take advantage of the system. I heard a story of somebody uploading like 40,000 cat books or something. I'm just making up that number. I can't remember, but I kind of get it why they have some fees, but I really, I, I really don't get it. All right, pre-orders. Can you do a print pre-order through Ingram Spark? Yes. This is where they finally shine. They have their one bright spot, probably because I'm pretty much always comparing them to KDP. Not only do they have the option to do a print pre-order up to and maybe over a year. Actually, I'm pretty sure you can do even longer than a year if you wanted to. They also have expanded distribution. I think we should put that in the other category, so I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but this might be the one and only time that they get a five. For sales reporting, however, <laughs> their pre-orders really tank their rating because they don't have a pre-order reporting tab. They technically do, but I've talked about this before and I've even, back when they had a phone number, talked to people at Ingram Spark before. This tab shows nothing until they start printing the books, which typically, typically happens about 10-ish days before release day. So again, to give you a real life example of why this is frustrating, I had this book on pre-order since February, I think, February or March 2024, and it came out in October. And right before release, I think it was actually uh, two or three weeks out, so it was, they started printing a little bit early. I suddenly went from zero pre-orders to 300 plus. I was like, what just happened? Where did those sales come from? Did they come from this month? Did they come from March? Did they come from June? Did they come from my Neck Alley promo? Did they come from my Goodreads promo? Did they come from my Kickstarter promo? Like, I don't know because I didn't see these sales come in when they actually came in. I only saw the pre-orders reported when they started printing. That would get like a one by itself. Then there's their regular sales reports. And those are kind of tricky because there's the email version that you get like I think automatically I don't know and then there's the online one that you can kind of go through the way you can go through KDP you can set the dates date ranges I think you can look at specific books separately but if you go back too far in time you have to start getting it emailed to you and you have to wait for it that can make it hard to do things quickly and then the email ones that I mentioned are just generally confusing to look at. And so I don't even bother typically looking at those. I just go to the website. So the website itself is average. That I would give a three. So let's meet in the middle. Sales reporting, it's gonna get a two for Ingram Spark. All right, last but not least, the other category. This is where they shine again, actually. They have really great reach or distribution as it's called. On their website, you can see where they sell their print books, for example. And compared to other companies that we're gonna talk about today, this is probably the best distribution that I'm aware of. So if you're like, I just want my book to be everywhere, then you might want to go with Ingram Spark. However, keep in mind, distribution is just making it available to these other companies, not that these other companies are guaranteed to buy it. That is a really big difference. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. You could, Your book could be available to Barnes & Noble. It could be on their Barnes & Noble website, that's great. But is it ever actually gonna be in the store? That's gonna depend on the individual Barnes & Noble stores and if they wanna carry your book, which is gonna be based on your sales and if your book seems worth selling. So availability is great with Ingram Spark, but that's not guaranteed, if that makes sense. Oh, and they also sell to libraries. And this is really nice because libraries have told me, like I said, they don't purchase from Amazon. So if they have the option to purchase on Ingram Spark, and I'm assuming that schools are the same way, actually, because they're both government organizations, then you're more likely to get your book into libraries and maybe schools. I don't think I've ever got my book in a school that I'm aware of. The, again, it's the option that you have if you go through Ingram Spark. So I'm gonna give them, for this one category, a five. I have no idea how these are gonna break down, but let's keep going to Barnes & Noble. <laughs> For accessibility and the ease of use, Barnes & Noble's website is a bit clunky. There's a few things that will potentially catch you up. I don't think it's good for beginners but it's not the worst, so I'm gonna give it a three. As far as their print costs, it's been a while since I've used Barnes & Noble, I will admit, but I feel like they pretty much compared to 
Ingram when I last checked. It's been a long time. And I heard a rumor, actually more than once I've heard this, that uh, Barnes & Noble actually uses Ingram Spark to print their books. So if that's true, it makes total sense that the print costs are about the same. So whatever I rated Ingram, what did I rate them? I think I gave them a three. <laughs> that's what I'll give Barnes & Noble. And for author royalties, also a three because I am pretty sure that they roughly compared to Ingram in this case as well, except I don't think they take wholesale discounts. So that's really good. Maybe I'm gonna up them to a four, actually, because that wholesale discount thing made me mad. Or did I already? Actually, I think I already bumped them up. I think Ingram Spark was lower than this, so I'll give them an average. Because there's no hidden places where they're taking an extra cut like Ingram, but I don't really think they were that amazing either. They're just average. <laughs> okay, customer service. Unfortunately, Barnes & Noble is a big fan of the copy-paste email, and so I've had experiences that are absolutely infuriating where I will ask an important question and they will give me some copy-paste thing directly from the website that I've already read, and I'll say, no, I'm trying to clarify, I really mean this specific thing, and then I get the same copy-paste email from a different person, literally the same one that the first person sent me. That just drove me up the wall, <laughs> and of course they don't have a phone number. So they are on par with Ingram Spark and their customer service department. It's just, I've not had really any good experiences yet. I hope that gets better because they are a newer-ish company. So they have potential. I just think that they don't really seem to prioritize actually reading the emails that you send them. <laughs> they just kind of assume that everybody's a beginner and that nobody does their research, which you know what, that's fair. I've had some experiences where people just want me to be their Google. And I'm like, you could have you could have typed that into Google and gotten your answer like that. So I get it, but also I don't get it. Oh, and since we've talked about returns for this category for the last two, I should mention I have not had to do a return with Barnes Noble yet. And maybe that's because again, if they are using Ingram Spark as their printer, it's less common to have a misprint. But I also just haven't used Barnes Noble to print very often. Yeah, I just really haven't used them a ton, so. I can't say for sure. All right, printing and shipping time. What did I rate Ingram? Cause it's exactly the same. <laughs> I think it was a two, very slow. Uh, don't expect to get your book within the month. Honestly, if you do, you're lucky. It usually takes a while. And any extra costs like the uploading fees again. This is where I can happily say there are no uploading fees that I remember. Yeah, I can't think of any. So I'm gonna say there's no hidden fees and give them a five. Then also the pre-order options is another place where I am very happy with Barnes & Noble because they do have the option to put your book on pre-order as a print book, both uh, paperback and hardcover. The only downside, and the reason I'm gonna dock a point, <laughs> is it's Barnes & Noble. So they're not gonna be putting these pre-orders on their competitor's website. It's only a pre-order through Barnes & Noble, meaning that it's not international because Barnes & Noble is in the US, and some people might not buy from Barnes & Noble, so it's, it's a more limited pre-order. But it's still a pre-order, so I'm gonna give them a four. Sales reporting is next. And keep in mind, I have not used their sales reporting tabs in a long time. So it could have changed actually. Gosh, it's been a long, long time since I've looked at that. But I don't remember having any serious issues with it. I just remember it being a little bit clunky. I think I moved my books back to Ingram Spark and I just haven't looked at it since. You know what, I'm gonna say they're average. I, I really can't think of anything to rave about or complain about, so they're average and the other category. And here, the only thing I could think of to put was that their hardcovers do have dust jackets. So that's a positive. When you have a Barnes & Noble copy, I actually have one right here, hold on. Yes, okay, this is my Barnes & Noble proof copy. So see, they have a gorgeous dust jacket. They don't put that not for resale bar across the cover. I should have mentioned that for Amazon. And the like other category is a con because it's super annoying when you have this like not for resale bar across all of their proof copies. You can't remove that. So with Barnes & Noble, they don't do that. However, for a long time, the case itself was more limited. This is, again, this was a test copy. So I didn't actually end up ordering the final one to compare. I can't can't show you the comparison, but I feel like the printing colors are just not very vibrant. Like this was a lot more vibrant and I don't know, there's some slight color differences as well. This is 48 hour books with the foil and this is Barnes and Noble. I wish I had an Ingram Spark copy on hand, but I think it would be more comparable to this. What do I give them for this? I don't know, I feel like their other category, I'll give them a four because it is nice to have the dust jackets, but 
I do remember it being very complicated to figure out and actually make it work. Okay, last but not least, 48 hour books. Ooh, okay, disclaimer for this company, they are not print on demand. You have to order a bulk number of books that then you sell. They do not sell for you, but I wanna mention them, like I said at the beginning, because of things they can do that are very special edition printing, like the foiling, for example, and the edge printing that I mentioned that you can't get at these other three companies. Keep in mind, there are also other companies that do special edition printing, but 48 Hour Books is the one that I've used, so I thought I'd mention them in this video really quick. Okay for the categories, starting with accessibility and ease of use. I had a really good experience with them. Uh, their website seems really clear now, but when I was first researching it, I remember two very specific points where I was so incredibly confused, specifically about all the different foiling options because they all looked the same to me. And when I tried to clarify, I remember I did have a customer service thing where they kind of repeated back to me what was on the website that I had already read. So I'm gonna dock a point for that. Otherwise, I would have said it was really easy to use, but I'm gonna give them a four. And you do work more directly with people on this one. I don't know, I had a good experience, so I'm gonna give them a four. For their print costs, <laughs> I thought that they were great until I did a comparison to Ingram Spark. And now to be totally fair to 48 hour books, there's special edition printing. So of course they're gonna cost more. This is almost not even fair to be ranking them, but I just wanted to bring it up because Ingram Spark for the exact same order was somewhere around, I'll put the exact number on the screen. It was like 2,500 something versus 48 hour books was over $5,000 for the same number of books, okay? So when I did the math and kind of broke it down, it was roughly $15 per book on Ingram Spark, which I thought was a lot to print. <laughs> But with 48 hour books, it was over $30 per book. So I am going to be forced to say that's not great. <laughs> but again, in their defense, I don't know what other special printing companies would cost. I don't know what the comparison is. And on the flip side, author royalties. Also tricky because they don't actually have an author royalty. They let you set the price. Because of that, I'm going to give them a five because the author royalty could be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> for customer service, I was almost gonna give them a five as well. I had a really great experience. There was just like one or two instances where, again, they kind of gave me the runaround with the website information on repeat. And I was like, yes, I know, but can you help me understand? <laughs> but then I called and I got a different person and they were amazing. So I'm gonna say like a, a 4.5. And since we're mentioning misprints and returns in this category, I have never had any. I think that's a good thing as well. If I ever did, I would feel very confident about talking to the company and that they would take care of it. Okay, for printing and shipping time, hugely impressed. Obviously they're 48 hour books, so th they do, they really are fast. <laughs> the only actual 48 hour book was the proof copy. And then after that, you do have to pay a lot to actually get the bulk order within 48 hours, but even without paying anything extra and just doing like a regular shipping, I was still shocked by how fast that huge bulk order of books came to me. They get a five. Any extra costs like the uploading fees, kind of. But again, they're not a print on demand company. So like all of these fees kind of seem fair. Like, yes, it costs a lot more to have foiling. Yes, it costs more to have edges. Yes, it costs more to have a higher grade paper or whatever else you might want to include, but you're choosing it. The one thing that I thought was kind of weird was that a proof copy costs $40 for every single proof. So like there was one proof copy, like assumed that you would get it, $40. And then if you wanted another one, another $40. Like that's a lot for a proof copy. <laughs> anyway, I'm not gonna rate them for this one because I just, I don't think I should probably include them in the overall ranking. I'm just gonna share that information and say, yes, it's gonna cost more. And I'm not gonna say they're hidden costs, but there are a lot of extra, extra costs. Every single little thing that you wanna add is gonna cost a lot extra. <laughs> Then there's the pre-order options. Again, not applicable because they're not selling your book for you. Yes, you could put it on pre-order on your website. So technically yes, but we're not gonna rate that category. And we're not gonna rate the sales reporting because again, they're not selling it for you. And that leads to our last category, the other category where it is worth mentioning that again, they're not print on demand. If you have to order from them, it really is extremely expensive unless you can do at least a hundred books or more. And then you get 25 free books, at least back when I was ordering and that makes it a lot more of a good deal. <laughs> and I just think this was worth an honorable mention because there have been a lot of you who have asked me, can you talk more about 48 hour books? And so that's my overall experience was it was really good, but it was a lot more expensive. But if you wanna do a special print edition, it might be a really great option. Although I will say that I might try, I think it's Book Vault next time for a print 
special print books. Or I've heard Lulu will let you import, if you did a Kickstarter, all those addresses all at once as one big bulk upload and then they'll send out the books for you. So it's a huge time saver instead of having to type in every single one of those people yourself. So I might try other companies going forward. Let me know if you have tried any other ones that I didn't mention because I would love recommendations, especially if you actually liked the company. Definitely comment below and let all of us know if you have another recommendation. But those are the four companies. Let's check it out. Are you ready for the ranking? Okay. Here it is. As expected, KDP is a clear winner. And I think Barnes & Noble would probably be my next choice, but I actually end up going with Ingram Spark a lot more than I would like, just because of those pre-orders and hardcover options. They really don't have any competition yet in those areas, but I kind of hope that they do soon. And if you made it to the end of the super long video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching.